Okay, so we are going to look at the poem titled Anniversaries of War by the Israeli poet Yehuda Amikai. So Yehuda Amikai, he was born in 1924, he died in 2000. He was a poet from Israel, a Jewish poet, Israel poet. And he was a winner of Israel's most coveted award, Israel Prize. And by general consensus, he is considered to be Israel's poet laureate. Israel is famous title award at Israel Prize is the critic Poet Laureate and Oranga British literature Laka Kandatan down poet who represents a nation. I'm gonna allow a poet number poet laureate and the party actually the Britain Loru official designation than Yana. So the British king or queen actually gives that uh, designation, gives that position to a famous poet of that age. And uh, that person is called a poet laureate. Wordsworth was a poet laureate. Tennyson was a poet laureate. And then poet laureates and people the poet laureates. Apo Israel and the poet laureate in generally Angigari ke Amikai. He was born in Germany as a German Jew. And he fled due to Nazi persecution and lived for most part of his life in a place called Yemen Moshe, the first Jewish neighborhood outside the old city walls. Germany, during the Second World War, they were, the Jews in Germany were persecuted by the Nazis under Hitler, as you all know. And he had to flee. He had to escape from Germany. And uh, they he, he escaped to Israel. And they set up one of the first Jewish neighborhoods there. Uh, that is where he lived. I mean, Moshe Novarana Siltha Thomas Cherno. Amikai is often seen as a foundation stone of Israeliness. And his poems have been translated into more than 37 languages. So, uh, Israel, the poet laureate, Tarana Parnatha Bola Tene, Israeliness. What makes you an Israeli person? Are they our Indianness? Some of the poems are essence of being Israeli. Other etonamai personify Jena or poet Titana. Uh, Amikai Ariapurnada and his works have been translated to so many languages, 37 languages. Uh, you may even have read some of them in Malayalam. He fought in Israel's first war of independence. Uh, he has fought as a soldier actually in many wars, but uh, also he is a person who doesn't like war. Even though he had to fight in wars, he doesn't like it. He is a pacifist. We'll come to that. And the poem actually is a war poem, just called Anniversaries of War. Uh, then there is a little bit about his works. His first work was Now and in Other Days, published in 1955. And uh, he has contributed to different genres like children's literature, short story, theater. I'm going to pala that thriller writing center. He's only written one novel. It is titled Not of This Time, Not of This Place, published in 1963. And it was later dramatized. And that play was called Bells and Trains. It was staged in 1967. But mostly he is known for his poetry. Hailed by critics as the Walt Whitman of Jerusalem, he is the author of the cycle of poems, Jerusalem 1967. Walt Whitman is an American poet. We American poet laureate. American personified poet Walt Whitman. Jerusalem and Walt Whitman So he many critics called him the his position in Jerusalem was as important as the position of Walt Whitman in American literature. And his famous Cycle of poems, cycle one of the series of poems, Anna, Jerusalem 1967. Uh, even though he fought in three wars, Amikai was deeply sensitive to the tragedy of war. And his poem titled Seven Laments for the War Dead is sufficient proof of his pacifist leanings. He had to, because of the situations in which uh, he lived, he had to fight in three wars, but he did not like fighting in wars. He was forced to do that, but uh, he did not like it. And he was actually a pacifist. Pacifist is a person who prefers peace. Yuddham venda, samadhanam madhi, and anganta preference aladhinu venti, samsayarika geyum, irudhu geyum, varkokka chena alagal yana, namar pacifist ondhu varayanadhu. And angana yudhu pacifist modul adhaham aludhi yudhu poem ana, Seven Laments for the War Dead. He believed that a peaceful coexistence was possible with Israel's Arab neighbors and used whatever influence he had on Yitzhak Rabin to initiate peace talks with 
with palestinians while rabin was israel's prime minister appo israel jerusalem il eppozhum undavana eppozhum ulla middle eastern conflict namukku ariyam between the arab uh, palestinians and the a uh, jewish israeli people but he thought that the, all that conflict can be resolved peacefully both sides can coexist peacefully and vishwasirna or aal aanu and he tried to even influence the then prime minister of israel it's a rabbi he had some influence on the prime minister and he tried to convince him let us not fight with the arab people let us exist in mutual peace and harmony uh critic named devir Abramovich sums up Amikai's poetry, Amikai's poetry thus. Amikai ne patti te, he Abramovich ne varay naala parna dinge na na. Amikai's canvas is characterized by colloquial language, self-deprecating humor, irony, and the autobiographical, showcasing a depth of emotion that is raw and introspective. Amikai canvas ne varna naamla almost he canvas sil padam mari kena to bolle abe ham page le kavida erdum bol. Adile naamla endo ke ana kaan na ta. Adine characteristic features ondo ke ana. Colloquial language he uses very everyday language. Colloquial na na naamla re informal item naamla sadharana sambash na tele ubey ke na oru conversational language ana. Local language ana. Self deprecating humor. He has humor but it is not a kind of humor that makes fun of somebody else. Self deprecating na varna it is a humor that makes fun of yourself that is a kind of humor he uses irony you know what is irony and the autobiographical there are many autobiographical elements in all his poems and he he also shows a lot of a depth of emotion in his poetry there's a lot of emotion very raw emotion valare Uh, strong emotion namak adu gaanan pattum and the poems are also introspective introspective nu varnal looking inside ennalla meaning aanu so introspection means to uh, reflect to think etc so he is he is not talking about how other people should be or anything but he is rather musing whatever he is saying he may be talking about the world he may be talking about politics and you know uh, society and things like that but he is always introspective he thinks about what can i do what have i done wrong can i do something differently so that that way he is always uh, very reflective and thoughtful with just a few words and images he delivered special insights and evocative associations on a breadth of such weighty issues as the holocaust god laws love idealism war and national destiny unlocking a world enriched by allusions to both the old testament and the quotidian കുറച്ച് വിത്ത് ജസ്റ്റ് എ ഫ്യൂ വേർഡ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഇമേജസ് വളരെ കുറച്ച് വേർഡ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഇമേജസ് മാത്രം ഉപയോഗിച്ച് വളരെ കടുകട്ടി വേർഡ്സ് ഒന്നും ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്നില്ല ആ ഒരുപാടൊന്നും എഴുതുന്നില്ല കുറച്ച് മാത്രം വളരെ ബ്രീഫ് ആയിട്ട് എഴുതുകയും സിമ്പിൾ വേർഡ്സ് ഒക്കെ ഉപയോഗിച്ചിട്ട് ഹി വാസ് ഏബിൾ ടു ഗിവ് ഇൻസൈറ്റ് ഓൺ സെവറൽ ഇഷ്യൂസ് വിച്ച് ആർ വെരി വെയ്റ്റി വളരെ സീരിയസ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഇഷ്യൂസിനെ പറ്റി പക്ഷെ സിമ്പിൾ ആയിട്ടുള്ള രീതിയിൽ എഴുതാൻ അദ്ദേഹത്തിനെ പറ്റി എന്തൊക്കെ ഇഷ്യൂസ് ആണ് ദ ഹോളോ കോസ്റ്റ് ഹോളോ കോസ്റ്റ് ആക്ച്വലി ഐ തിങ്ക് യു യു ആർ ഫെമിലിയർ വിത്ത് ദാറ്റ് ടേം ഓൾസോ Uh, holocaust with a small letter h refers to any incident where several people are killed at one go otte adike mass aayittu oru vaada aalugare marikkina oru event ne nammal holocaust endu parayum but when you use holocaust with a capital h it refers very specifically to a particular event that is the uh, genocide of the jews under nazi germany hitler and nazis galde engane jews ne complete aayittu avare genocide otta adike you know second world war na kadagal ningalku ariyam and frank inda kada angatha kadagal ke ningal kettittundavum so uh, how the jews were killed systematically and uh, um, in a, at a very large scale during the second world war that is called the holocaust with a capital h abhi holocaust ne pattiyum then a god many of his poems are also very spiritual he meditates on god then loss nashtam love idealism uh, how do you deal with idealism and the practicalities of life war of course uh, and national destiny israel is especially a country which believes that it has a national destiny because the jewish people believe that they are chosen by god they are called the chosen people and uh, in the old testament of the bible it is mentioned that uh, god allowed them to um, 
uh, God uh, delivered them from slavery under the Egyptians and promised that he will lead them to the promised land. So they believe that they are the chosen people and that Israel is their promised land. So Angane, as a nation, we have a destiny. In the Vishwasikina Alagalanapa, Adine Petiti, in the national destiny. In the other, how do you match your expectations and your imagination of that uh, national destiny? How do you ha have that and also, uh, you know, be kind to the neighbors that you have and the other people who also claim their space in the world. So these are the kind of things that he's interested in. And his uh, poetry has a lot of allusions to, on the one hand, to the Old Testament. Allusion means references. Hmm? References are allusions. Old Testament, Bible, le, Old Testament in a place that the Korea references under. Adabola the quotidian. Quotidian means uh, related to everyday life. Hmm? So Casual itola everyday life in Linum, they have Korea reference at Kunanda, and then Old Testament in Linum, they have Korea references at Kunapi, the Bola, Indian Ella, Korea Sambangalaka, Adanya Dana, Adathenda, poetry. Uh, now we will move on to a description of this particular poem. What is it about? And then after that, we will move on to the poem. So this poem, Anniversaries of War, is about the narrator's visit to a monument in Israel called. Tel Gath. Hmm. Tel Gath is a biblical place. Hmm. It is considered to be the birthplace of Goliath, the giant who fought against David. But David and you know, Goliath, or Goliath, you might have uh, uh, read about that in the in the Bible or you know in the stories from the Bible. All of you will be familiar with the story. Goliath was a very strong warrior, and he was fighting against the Israeli people. He was a Philistine, and uh, he challenged the Israelis to send one person to fight against uh, him and all of them were afraid but uh, this very young boy or very young man uh, named uh, David came and he offered to do that and he came with a slingshot and uh, you know he hit Goliath on the forehead and killed him and that is how the Israelis won that war we know that story from the Bible so he he story la David and Goliath story la Goliath and the in the Vishusika Padana Salamana, Tel Gath and the Varena, or Sal, it is a biblical place right now. Tel Gath and the Varanda Kritya Maitoru Salam Namaka identify Chambatila. And many uh, people think that there is a um, place called uh, Tel uh, Tel Es Safi. Tel Es Safi and the Varena is Salam and Israel. Other than Nayana Tel Gath and Nana archaeological wishes will come to that. Uh, so tell means a site which is made up of many layers where each layer may be seen as representing a different phase of the history of the site. So we tell Gath and the site. This is actually supposed to be an aerial view of that place. So it is a very Mastalam. Uh, or archaeological, uh, historical monument. Then, there are layers of soil. There are monuments. There are many tell in Israeli language, uh, Hebrew language. And uh, uh, so, uh, because there are many layers, that can also be seen as a metaphor for the many layers of history. Because these are the places where over centuries many things have happened. And each one each incident is like one layer. Uh, many layers of soil and the many layers of history and the lady deal and amaka interpret chain. But okay. Uh, Telgat is also historically important since it had an Arab settlement that was eventually abandoned during the Israel Israeli War of Independence. Apo other Angan and Muri history in the Israelis of one, the Jewish Algol on the settled chain of the Mumbai or Arab settlement in Dino. Avare Avad in the Nodichita and his so called Israeli War of Independence of Kanakana, Padinda, history in the Barra Ipukana, the motherly layers of Muke Karinal, Avad in the Odikapatal Karim, Avade Pandatama Chirinal Kari, Avade Elam history at Angirikin or Salamana, Telgatana Varana, a biblical reference and political significance of Salamana. Historical importance of Salamani, the Lam, Salan. The place offers the poet a context 
to discuss different layers of history and different wars at various points of time in history nammal poem kaanumbo valare cheriya poem aanengilum adile telgath ennu parnadu selathine refer cheynadu kondu thanne we should understand that the poet is not talking about just one moment or just a simple thing he is talking about these different layers of history pa pala history inde pala layers adu chelathu olippichu vecha layers aayirikkam chelathu aaru ippo samsaarikkatha karyangal aayirikkam angane pala layers chelathine കംപ്ലീറ്റ്ലി മണ്ണടിച്ചിട്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ മറ്റൊരു ലെയർ ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്നത് അപ്പൊ ആ ഹിസ്റ്ററിന്റെ ആ ഒരു പ്രത്യേക സ്വഭാവത്തിനെ ഹൈലൈറ്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ടി യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നതാണ് ഈ ടെൽ ഗാത്തിനെ ആസ് എ മോട്ടിഫ് ഇൻ ദിസ് പോയ Uh, the place was also once famous for its wine presses gat ennu parayunnathu hebrew bhashayile wine wine press at wine press is a place where the wine is uh, created appa angane ullo oru salam aayittum Uh, it is famous there is a general consensus among archaeologists that tel gath is tel es safi which means white mound since there are lots of white chalky cliffs near gath padine tel es safi ennum parayum white mound ennu parayunnathu cliffs allengil mounds nu parana kunni kunni small hills aanu appo adine white colored chalky cliffs aayadukonde adine tel es safi ennum parayum the place carries biblical echoes because of the whole goliath story the title is suggestive of the anniversaries of war that goes beyond the ones that the narrator fought it extends to the war that were fought in the middle ages apo ee poetry na title anniversaries of war aanu Uh, just like telgath which has many layers the title also is not talking about just his own experiences of fighting in war anniversary enala vaakku parayumba thana you can think of many years alle adu oru sambhavathinte anniversary aanu ennu nammal parayumbo it is basically um, at least one year has passed and usually every year aanu nammal anniversary mark cheynathu അപ്പൊ അങ്ങനെയുള്ള ഒരുപാട് ഏതോ പണ്ട് നടന്നു പോയ യുദ്ധങ്ങളുടെ ആനിവേഴ്സറി എന്നുള്ള രീതിയിലാണ് പറയുന്നത് ആൻഡ് ഹീസ് നോട്ട് ജസ്റ്റ് ടോക്കിംഗ് അബൌട്ട് ദ ത്രീ വേർസ് ഇൻ വിച്ച് ഹീസ് ഹീ ഫോർട്ട് ഹീ സെയിൻ ദാറ്റ് ഇൻ ദിസ് പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ പ്ലേസ് മെനി വേർസ് ഹാവ് ബീൻ ടോട്ട് ഫോർട്ട് ത്രൂ ഔട്ട് ഹിസ്റ്ററി ആൻഡ് ഹീ ഇസ് നൗ thinking of all those things and the title encapsulates ദ എൻറ്റയർ ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഓഫ് വേർസ് ദാറ്റ് ഹാവ് ഹാപ്പൻ ഇൻ ദിസ് ഏരിയ Uh, in the poem the poet speaks of taking his children to the burial mounds in telgath avade pandu marichu poya aalukalde burial mounds und places where people were buried angotte the poet had taken his own children avare oru oru journey aayittu oru outing pole iyal makkaleyum kondu poyadine pettittana idil parayunnathu the poem is a journey through time so it is not just a physical journey from their home wherever they were staying uh, to this Uh, particular um, you know geographical location which is also a journey through time journey through time and we are in other because he is remembering these old times his own experiences and also he is imagining all the histories of this place and he is sharing them with his children so that way it is also a journey through time uh, the moments are marked by thoughts of war and events related to war so uh, the things that he is talking about everything he is now um, even the present moment when he is sitting there happily with his children the moments are marked by his uh, thoughts and memories of war so sondamayittla memories mathramalla ayal anubhavikkatha history vadi ayal arinjittulla war inde pala events ne pettiyumulla ayalde chindagal idellam adilekku kadannu varumundu there's also a great deal of nature in the poem poetinte oro different uh, you know themes aanu parayunnathu when we read the poem it will become clearer the lyricism of the poem is balanced by an introspective mind that is continually conscious of the assessments of his past acts in war so the poem is very lyrical in the sense that it uses very simple language it has a nice rhythm and all that but at the same time usually when we say something is a lyric and something is very simple you think that it will be talking about very simple things or very happy things very light things but this is not like that even though it is written in a very lyrical simple manner the themes are quite heavy and the lyricism is balanced by an introspective mind as i said earlier it is a very reflective meditative thoughtful thought provoking poem so angane alla or aspect kudi adinund and continuously continually the poem is uh, assessing the um, past acts of war 
അത് ആ പോയറ്റ് എൻഗേജ് ചെയ്തിട്ടുള്ള പാസ്റ്റ് ടാക്സ് ഓഫ് വോർ മാത്രമല്ല ബിക്കോസ് ഹി വാസ് എ സോൾജർ ഹി പാർട്ടിസിപ്പേറ്റഡ് ഇൻ ത്രീ വോർസ് ഹി മസ്റ്റ് ഹവ് കിൽഡ് എ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് പീപ്പിൾ ഓർ അറ്റ്ലീസ്റ്റ് വൂണ്ടഡ് എ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് പീപ്പിൾ ആൻഡ് ഹി ഹാസ് ഗോൺ ത്രൂ എ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് ട്രബിൾ ആസ് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് വോർ ബട്ട് നോട്ട് ജസ്റ്റ് ദാറ്റ് വെൻ യു തിങ്ക് ഓഫ് ഓൾ ദ വേൾഡ്സ് ഇൻ ഹിസ്റ്ററി യു റിയലൈസ് ദാറ്റ് എ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് വയലൻസ് ഹാസ് ആക്ച്വലി ഹാപ്പൻ ഹിയർ സോ ഹിസ് തിങ്കിങ് അബൌട്ട് ഓൾ ദീസ് ഓൾ ദോസ് തിങ്സ് ദ പോയം ഇസ് പ്രസന്റഡ് ആസ് എൻ ഒബ്ലീക് ലേണിംഗ് എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് സോ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ learning experience for the poet and his children so he has brought them to this place to make them understand what exactly war is to make them understand the solemnity of war uh, that war is not something to be happy about war is not something to be very excited about it is a very heavy and deep thing and sometimes you can't avoid it because of historical reasons political reasons you may not be able to avoid it but it is never a good thing killing other people is not a good thing whether it is for a nation whether it is for religion whether it is for whatever the reason so sometimes you may be forced to engage in such activities but then you have to really think about it and think about what are the ways in which we can have a world which no longer has war in it how do we bring up a generation that no longer has to engage in war so when he brings his children there and presents the history of this place as a learning experience to them he is hoping that at least his children at least the new generation the younger generation will be able to grow up into a world where war is not a necessity so that is a learning experience that he is trying to convey to his children and also the younger generation in general idu ee salam ningal kaanu ivrathe history ningal manasilaakku ivide undaya yuddhangale petti ningal manasilaakku adu manasilaakka nu parna fully adu ulkolla ningal shramikku angane aanengil naale ningal valarnu valadavumbol yuddhangal illatha oru naaleyilekku ningal നിങ്ങൾ പടി വെച്ച് നിങ്ങൾ നടക്കാൻ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് പറ്റട്ടെ എന്നുള്ള രീതിയിലുള്ള ഒരു മെസ്സേജ് ആ പോയത്തിൽ ഇൻഹറൻറ്റ് ആയിട്ട് ഇരിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് so the narrator is teaching his children about history and war and the history of war the narrator is teaching the children about history e historical salatheke kodunna history ne petti padipikkunnade idu or war monument aanu appo war ne petti padipikkunnade and also the history of war these are three different things history nu parayumbol general history war is war that happens out there in the world and then there is also the history of war yuddhathinte history yuddhathinte charitram in war one will be judged by the acts that one did or did not do that we will see when we read the poem this is something that he is most concerned about and he is trying to tell the children that uh, you know you may think that you had no other option you may have gone to war but generally you will do a lot of things in war that later you might regret or somebody else when they come to know about it they may judge you for that ningal yuddathil cheyda chala karyangale pattittu pinnida aalukal ningale judge cheyan saadhyathund velayirthan saadhyathund was it right or was it wrong enna aalukkan saadhyathund there are also things that may be ee parayanathu these are things that you shouldn't have done but you did namma sadharana സാഹചര്യത്തിൽ നമ്മൾ ചെയ്യാത്ത കാര്യങ്ങൾ ചിലപ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ യുദ്ധത്തിന്റെ സാഹചര്യത്തിൽ ചെയ്യും ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ കില്ലിംഗ് പീപ്പിൾ റൈറ്റ് നോർമലി വെൻ യു ഗോ ഔട്ട് ഇൻ ടു ദ വേൾഡ് യു ഡോൺ ഗോ ആൻഡ് കിൽ പീപ്പിൾ ഈവൻ ഇഫ് ദേ ഈവൻ ഇഫ് യു ആർ അൺഹാപ്പി വിത്ത് ദം ഓർ ഈവൻ ഇഫ് ദർ ഇസ് എനി കോൺഫ്ലിക്ട് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ യു ആൻഡ് ദം യു ഡോൺ കിൽ ദോസ് പീപ്പിൾ ബട്ട് യു ഡൂ ഇറ്റ് ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് വോർ something you shouldn't have done but you do adupole thana there are many things because war is a, a situation it's a very exceptional kind of situation where uh, people will do anything to survive so you will do a lot of things which you should not ideally do and later if anybody comes to know about it they will judge you and even if nobody comes to know about it you will judge yourself that is what he is feeling now then there are also things that you did not do നിങ്ങൾ ചെയ്യാത്ത കാര്യം മേ ബി ദർ ആർ സംതിങ്സ് യു ഷുഡ് ഹാവ് ഡൺ മേ ബി യു ആർ ഫൈറ്റിംഗ് ഇൻ അ വോർ ആൻഡ് സംബഡി ഇസ് ലൈങ് വൂണ്ടഡ് ദർ ആൻഡ് യു ഷുഡ് ഹവ് ഹെൽപ് ദം ബട്ട് യു ജസ്റ്റ് ചോസ് ടു എസ്കേപ്പ് വിത്ത് യുവർ ഓൺ സ്കിൻ മേ ബി ദാറ്റ് ഹാപ്പൻ ആൻഡ് നോർമലി ഇഫ് യു സി എ പേഴ്സൺ ഔട്ട് ഓൺ ദ സ്ട്രീറ്റ്സ് സഫറിങ് യു വിൽ ട്രൈ ടു ഹെൽപ് ദം ബട്ട് ഇൻ അ വോർ യു മേ നോട്ട് ബി ഏബിൾ ടു ഡു ഇറ്റ് ഓർ യു മേ ജസ്റ്റ് നോട്ട് ഡു ഇറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ലേറ്റർ യു വിൽ റിഗ്രെറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ആസ് വെൽ യു വിൽ ബി ജഡ്ജ് ഫോർ വാട്ട് യു ഡിഡ് ആൻഡ് വാട്ട് യു ഡിഡ് നോട്ട് ഡു the poem exploits the passage of time both forwards and backwards this is another important element of this poem time ennalla aa oru sambhavam aanu when we read the poem this will become much clearer okay uh, so in this poem we can see 
ടു ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് മൂവ്മെന്റ്സ് ഓഫ് ടൈം ബോത്ത് ഫോർവേഡ്സ് ആൻഡ് ബാക്ക്വേർഡ്സ് ഫോർവേർഡ്സ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് എന്താണ് ഇപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ടൈം ഇസ് നോർമലി കൺസിഡർഡ് എസ് ലീനിയർ റൈറ്റ് വി ആർ ഹിയർ നൗ ഇൻ ദ പ്രസന്റ് ആൻഡ് വി ആർ മൂവിംഗ് ഇൻ എക്സോറബ്ലി ഇൻ ടു ദ ഫ്യൂച്ചർ ഫ്യൂച്ചറിലേക്കാണ് പോകുന്നത് പാസ്റ്റിലേക്ക് നമുക്ക് പോകാൻ പറ്റില്ല ബട്ട് ദർ ഇസ് ഓൾസോ മൂവ്മെന്റ് ഇൻ ടു ദ പാസ്റ്റ് ബിക്കോസ് ദ പോയിറ്റ് ഇസ് റിമെമ്പറിംഗ് ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഈസ് എ ജേർണി ഇൻ ടു ദ പാസ്റ്റ് memory is a journey into the past and he is trying to bring all those things here so at this particular place and at this particular moment when he is trying to teach his children the history of wars that happened in this particular place but also with the hope that they will have a better future from that moment you can see that time radiates in both directions history memory ennu parne backilekkum future his aspirations for the children ennu parayunathu ഫ്രണ്ടിലേക്കും ഫോർവേർഡ് അങ്ങനെ രണ്ട് ഡിറക്ഷനിൽ ടൈം പോകുന്നത് നമുക്ക് ഈ പോയത്തിൽ കാണാൻ പറ്റും ആസ് ദ ഡേ മൂവ്സ് ഫോർവേർഡ് ദ പോയറ്റ് മൂവ്സ് ബാക്ക്വേർഡ് ഇൻ ടൈം ആൻഡ് ഫോൾസ് ഇൻ ടു എൻ എക്സ്പാൻസീവ് മൂഡ് ആസ് ടൈം ഗോൾസ് ഓൺ സോ ഹീസ് സ്പെൻഡിംഗ് ദ ഹോൾ ഡേ ദർ വിത്ത് ഹിസ് ചിൽഡ്രൻസ് ലൈക്ക് എ പിക്നിക് ബട്ട് ആസ് എ ഡേ മൂവ്സ് ഓൺ ഹി മൂവ്സ് ബാക്ക്വേർഡ് ഇൻ ടൈം ഇൻ ടു ഹിസ് മെമ്മറീസ് ഹി ഇസ് തിങ്കിങ് അബൌട്ട് ദ പാസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഹി ഫോൾസ് ഇൻ ടു എൻ എക്സ്പാൻസീവ് മൂഡ് എക്സ്പാൻസീവ് മൂഡ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഇവിടെ ഉദ്ദേശിക്കുന്നത് ഹി ഇസ് ബിഗിനിങ് ടു ടോക്ക് അ ലോട്ട് ടു എക്സ്പാൻഡ് അ ലോട്ട് ടു എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ അ ലോട്ട് അബൌട്ട് ഹിസ് മെമ്മറീസ് അബൌട്ട് ദ പാസ്റ്റ് എക്സെട്രാ ഹി തിങ്സ് ഓഫ് ദ ബാറ്റിൽസ് ഇൻ ദ പാസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദിസ് മേക്സ് ഇം റിക്കോൾ എ ലൈൻ ഫ്രം എ പോയം റിട്ടൺ ബൈ എ പോയറ്റ് നെയ്മ്ഡ് സാമുവൽ ഇബിൻ നഗ്രില ഓർ ഇഷ്മുൽ ഹ നഗ്രി Uh, he was a medieval poet one of the most important jewish poets of the middle ages who was well known as a soldier and a statesman so shmuel ha nagrid ennalathu a poet inde hebrew peraanu samuel ibn nagrila ennalathu spanish peraanu annu pandu spainil iberia ennu parna sarathu thamasichirna oru poet aayirunnu but he was a jewish poet so he uh, is uh, the jewish people call him shmuel ha nagrid and Uh, the spanish people call him samuel ibn nagrila uh, so middle ages la a poet and he was both a soldier and a statesman he so just like amikai who was a soldier but who also writes poems against war uh, this uh, shmuel ha nagrid was also a soldier and a statesman statesman is like a politician but he was also a poet he was a reputed scholar of the talmud talmud is a scripture religious scripture of the jews and he fought in spain and also headed the arab army for nearly two decades so that life repetition but while he was in the battlefield he used to write poems and the narrator identifies himself with the earlier poet because both of them have written poems about war about soldiers about battles etc appo poet ne pole thanne pandu middle ages le thamasichirna oru soldier and statesman aayirunnu shmuel ha nagrid ayal oru vaadu yuddhathil pangeduthittunde pakshe aa yuddhathil pangedukkuna samayathe ayal valare meditative aayirunnu ayalum yuddhathine patti aalochirunnu yuddhathine edire poems ayalum eludhiyirunnu appo adu pole angane ulla oru aalumayittu aa poet swayam identify cheyana he is thinking that okay this man is a kindred soul even though he lived in the middle ages many centuries before me he was somebody whom i can identify with uh so we will mention the line when we read the poem uh the poet says he talked to his children whereas the earlier poet talked to his heart from the distant past uh thus suggesting the greatness of the earlier poet there are two people uh ഈ യുദ്ധ യുദ്ധങ്ങളെ പറ്റിയിട്ട് ആലോചിച്ച് വോറിനെ പറ്റി ആലോചിച്ചിട്ട് അവര് സംസാരിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് ബട്ട് അമിത് ഹായ് ഇസ് ടോക്കിംഗ് ടു ഹിസ് ഓൺ ചിൽഡ്രൻ വേർ ആസ് ദ പോയറ്റ് ഷ്മോൽ ഹാൻ അഗ്രി ടോക്ക് ടു ഹിസ് ഓൺ ഹാർട്ട് സോ ഹി സേസ് ദാറ്റ് ഹി തിങ്സ് ഷ്മൽ ഹാൻ അഗ്രി ഇസ് ബെറ്റർ ഹി ഇസ് ഗ്രേറ്റർ ദൻ മീ ബിക്കോസ് ഹി ഇൻ സം സെൻസ് അമിത് ഹായ് ഇസ് ട്രൈങ് ടു കൺവിൻസ് ഹിസ് ചിൽഡ്രൻ ആൻഡ് ടു ഗെയിൻ സം കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് recognition from them so he feels bad about some things and he wants his children to redeem him to say that okay you are forgiven and he also believes that if his children uh, become pacifists if they don't believe in war if they go on into a world they live in a world where war is unnecessary then in some way he will be redeeming himself by bringing them up as pacifists so in some sense he is dependent on them on their responses uh, but whereas so uh, shmuel ha nagrid doesn't have any such problem he is not dependent on other people he is very honest towards himself and he talks to his own heart while he is in the battlefields and the poem ends on an assertion of life over death in the image of the narrator and his children 
The poem suggests that life is both fleeting and eternal, fleeting like the spring and eternal in its resurrection in the cycle of seasons to which it belongs. Avasana, uh, the histories of war are basically images of death. But when the narrator ends the poem with a tableau of himself and his children at this place, this is actually a triumph of life over death because the children are now going to go their life stretches ahead of them and they are going to have a good life. So it is a triumph of life over death. And uh, the poem suggests that life is both fleeting and eternal. Fleeting and eternal, it is temporary, it is transient. Life and eternal, you live only for a short period of time. If you compare your lifespan to the uh, time that the entire universe has been in existence, then your life is a very fleeting thing. Any moment you may lose it. So it's a very fleeting thing. It's a very transient thing. At the same time, life is eternal because your life is connected to the lives of other people. This moment is connected to all the histories, all the moments that came before it. So that way you can say that life is eternal. People, individual people may live or die. They may be born, they live, they die. But life is something that continues. So that, that is a kind of situation that is. So in some sense, it is a very hopeful thought for him to say that I have lived this kind of a life, but I don't have to feel regretful because my children will take this forward. Even if I die with a lot of regrets in my heart, my children will live and they will have a better life and they, their children will hopefully have an even better life. So that kind of a hopeful image is what he ends the poem with. Uh, life is both fleeting and eternal, fleeting like the spring, because like all seasons, uh, spring, winter comes and then spring comes. But after spring, there will always be summer and then autumn and then again winter. Seasons are always in cycle. So life is also like the spring. When it is there, it is very beautiful, but it will slowly pass. And it is also eternal in its resurrection in the cycle of seasons to which it belongs. Spring Spring will always come again because uh, seasons are always in a cycle. They will always come in this particular way. So similarly, in an individual person may be born, they will live and they will die. But life is something that continues. Maybe you will be reborn as somebody else. Maybe your soul will still continue after your death. And even if that doesn't happen, even if you are... Even if you are not reborn or anything, uh, whatever you have done today will affect the next generation. And whatever you are today has been affected by the previous generation. So there is a kind of continuity of life, just like the continuity of the seasons. This is what he is trying to convey through the poem. So they have given us all the important themes and uh, everything that we need to know to understand the poem. And then we have a very short poem anniversaries of war it is just four stanzas but i think we will stop now because it's already 250 and we will continue uh, in the next class one second i will just stop the recording